Hello, this is Tim Kamsa with TBC Action Coach of Indiana with our Business Spotlight series. The purpose is to promote local business owners through our social channels and email database. And the reason that we're doing that is when every small business is strong, the economy is strong. So today I have the pleasure of speaking with Rhoda. Rhoda, welcome to the program. It's great to have you on today. Thank you, Tim. Good to be here. Well, let's start with having you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit of your story. I am Rhoda Israelov, and I have been a writer for more decades than most of you have been alive. <laughs> Started out when I was a financial planner, and I was in financial services for 27 years. And 21 of those years, I was a weekly columnist for the Indianapolis Business Journal and then the Indianapolis Star. And so I learned to write for the public for lay readers on complex subjects. And when I retired, I went to a networking meeting where I met a gentleman who thought that blogging was going to be for me. And so I, I bought into a blogging company and I started my company, Say It For You. So I head up a team of writers and we write what you read when you go on our clients' websites. The goal is to show that our clients are in the now, they understand the power of inbound marketing, and they also are in the know. They have something to say and to tell about their industry and their business. So we say it for you, hence the name. <laughs> Fantastic. So tell us a little bit about uh, you personally. Uh, you're here in uh, Indiana. Is this home? Indianapolis has been home since 1968. I was born in Pittsburgh and grew up in New York City and worked and lived in Kansas City, Missouri before settling here. So most of my life, obviously, I've been a Hoosier, <laughs> a, a happy Hoosier, um, despite the, the unexpected snow days that we had. <laughs> right? <laughs> Wonderful. So um, let's go into a little bit more detail about your business. If I was to, you know, I have a lot of fun with people on the show with this question. If I was to say, what's your 60 second commercial? Uh, what would you uh, tell us about your business? When people find you, perhaps through a referral, or perhaps meeting you in person, or perhaps even through search, one way or another, they're likely to check you out on your website. And so what we do is help you make the right first impression with valuable information that makes readers value you and want to come back for more. Fantastic. And how long has Say It For You been in business? We are in our 13th year. Congratulations. And, uh, thank you. This is a one woman business with seven subcontracted writers, um, web designers, and other advisors. And um, we have clients now that are not only in Indiana, but also in Canada and in other cities in the United States. Wow, an international business. Yes. Good for you. So there so are two, two things that make us a little bit different from most companies that do content writing. So first, we take one client per type per market, and we guarantee exclusivity in our contract. Mm. Secondly, we give you, the client, the copyright to the material. So we can wow. never be legally used again by anyone else, and certainly not by us. So it becomes yours. It's written with you in mind and with your help because blogging is not something where you, the owner of the business, can go to sleep and say, wake me up when it's over. <laughs> Cooperative effort. We are the wordsmiths. We are the researchers, but we also need you and your employees and your customers to help us create that meaningful content for you. Right. So um, who do you serve? Who's your, your best client? We call that a target audience. If you go on a website to look for anything at all, and on the top it says the word blog, and you click on that, and 
the last entry was six months old, <laughs> three months old. That's our ideal client because you understand that you need to tell the story, but somehow you didn't have the manpower or the time to do it. Most business owners and professional practitioners who are also our clients don't have time to both do it and say it. So we're helping you say it. The ideal client is a, um, a business or a practice where there are questions that people need answers before they're going to buy from you. It's not a simple buy. Mm. So if you are a personal injury attorney, if you are a cosmetic surgeon or a chiropractor or a specialty dentist or a divorce lawyer, any of those things, or if you have are trying to recruit workers, you want to show that yours is a culture where anyone would want to come and work with you and learn from you. Those would be our ideal clients. Wonderful. So uh, Rhoda, tell us what's been the greatest impact that COVID has had on your business? I think that most of our clients, most of my clients have come through personal networking or from the results of that through referrals because this is a, a very intimate in a way relationship when you're writing in someone else's voice and you're really getting into their head and trying to express that so before covid most of the clients were where i could have breakfast with you and i could shake your hand i would have met you at a party whatever but i would have met you in person but of course with covid i came into the zoom world in a big way and since then, this has actually um, had the effect of spreading our reach, mm. for, you know, all the way, as I said, to Canada, to both coasts. We have clients on, on each coast and then Atlanta, places where I have never visited, in fact, <laughs> are, are our clients. And we meet them the way I'm meeting you today. <laughs> Fantastic. So we've all had to pivot during uh, COVID to figure out a way to make our business work. And, and you mentioned Zoom already, but is there uh, another key change or pivot that you had to make to, to help you survive during the, the pandemic to make a difference in your business? And, and if so, what, how's that been working for you? Because there was so much less going out, going places, hmm. it takes discipline to focus on the different clients and the different topics and to when you're looking at a computer screen <laughs> in my case two computer screens <laughs> where you're, you're looking at that all day and you're thinking and one of the things that hasn't changed but just uh, the way of doing it has changed is that i've always believed that to be a good blogger you have to read around have to be reading everything magazines um go to i used to go to cvs and just stand at the magazine stand and see what were they talking about so i i would bring that all into the blogs well much of that isn't going to cvs so much anymore as looking online for things so it it you have to get used to being more dependent on digital information mm makes a lot of sense yes well it's a good thing that the the digital option is there for you when we weren't able to to go out and and get into the stores right definitely and in fact i remember writing when no one knew the word blog <laughs> when i didn't know the word blog which stands by the way for web blog so it's like a diary web blog was shortened to blog and it is basically different from what you read on a website page in general. And the, the main way that it's different is that it doesn't die, it stays there. Mm. So when I publish my blog today, that blog will be there 10 years from now right. on my website. In fact, there are 1900 blog posts on my own website. Wow. Every time you put a new one on, it pushes the old ones back a space. Yeah. 
that means there's a library there that you can access a library of information but not only is it a library it's a signal to google and to other search engines that i'm using the words blogging and content writing and wordsmithing mm. so many times that i'm sort of paying a mortgage where when you pay a mortgage you know part of it is going to your equity <laughs> <laughs> some is going to interest, but some is going to your equity. Well, your key words are your equity, and you're building equity with your blog on your own website, helping yourself win search. I've never heard it explained that way, but that makes a ton of sense. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. So here's an interesting question, Rhoda. It's been said that smart people learn from their mistakes and wise people learn from the mistakes of others. So What's a mistake you've made along the way that you'd be willing to share so that other entrepreneurs can learn from your experience? I think one, one mistake that I made in the beginning was not uh, clarifying in a written contract mm. in the early years what we were doing. And so I, in other words, the more things are understood and accepted on both ends of a contract, <laughs> the happier everybody's going to be. And so I learned that pretty early on. Mm -hmm. And I um, kept revising the contract so that everything is very crystal clear. All of them are the same. So that if, if client A meets client B at a party and well, how are you doing? What is she charging you? It's gonna be <laughs> the same answer. So it's not gonna be, it's not going to be, oh, how come she's doing that for you and not for me? Right. <laughs> Good advice. Thank you. So second last question here. Um, we're going to have your contact information included with this video so that folks can uh, contact your website or reach out to you. Is there anything else that you'd like to make sure that we cover today? Uh, or, or do you have any types of offers? Or what's the best way for folks to learn a, of whether you're the right fit for them? I think that a phone call or a Zoom call to chat is, is always a good way to meet mm -hmm. and to tell me about your business. And even if it's not a good fit, I'm going to be able to look at your website and make some suggestions that will possibly help you mm. market yourself better. Wonderful. Thank you for that. So last question here, Rhoda, what's been most inspiring to you? during all of the craziness of the past year? The fact, number one, I have three sons. Um, one lives in Portland, Oregon, one in Chicago, and one lives in Carmel, Indiana. <laughs> and feeling the connection with them, even though we could not visit in person for a very long time, mm -hmm. uh, was very strengthening. Uh, staying in touch with friends, writing notes, picking up the phone. It, it, it just highlighted the value of human connection. That's really what blog content is about, is making connections so that people feel who you are and how much you value who they are. Wonderful. <laughs> well, that does conclude our interview. For those listening, if you've heard something that's piqued your interest, if you've been uh, thinking that you should have a blog or like Rhoda said, you, you have a blog, but you haven't touched it in a few months, please uh, take advantage of the opportunity to, to speak with Rhoda. She, as she said, she will, uh, even if it's not the, the right fit for you, she'll provide you some insight and some feedback on your website that you're gonna walk away with things that you can, can adjust. If you're a busy business owner like many of us and, and you know that you need to be providing this content and you want to take advantage of the, the SEO opportunities, but you just don't have the time, reach out to Rhoda, have her uh, explain how she can take that uh, responsibility off of your plate and make sure you're getting good quality content out on a regular basis. For everyone that appears on the show, we do offer a complimentary coaching session. So Rhoda will talk about that um, offline here. And uh, it's been a pleasure learning about you and your business. And I wish you tremendous success. Thank you for the opportunity. All right. Have a wonderful day. You too.